we have different types of classifications of laboratory apparatus here. The first one would be your glassware. Secondly, you have your disposable labware. Then you have your experimental apparatus. And of course, you have your analytical apparatus. So these are the four different classifications of laboratory tools or laboratory apparatus that we have. Now, the first one, of course, would be your glassware. Your glassware is usually used for measuring volumes and for storing them. So you have different types of glassware here. You can have your graduated cylinder even. Your graduated cylinder is still part of your glassware. Your, um, your flask, different types of flask, different types of uh, beakers here can be found under your glassware. So you have your Erlenmeyer flask, your distilling flask, your beakers. These are all different types of glassware that you have in your lab. Now, disposable labwares, these are used for growing organisms and for collecting specimens, okay? So you have your specimen cups. These are the things that you use just once because, of course, we call this disposable labwares, those uh, measuring cups, for example, or collecting cups that you use to, to collect your urine, to collect your blood samples, okay? So these are disposable, disposable labwares. We only use them once, then we dispose of them. Okay, another example would be your, your petri dishes, okay, the things that you use whenever you'd be growing microbia or, or bacteria in the lab. Okay, so those are your disposable labwares, those things that you only use once in the lab, then you throw out. All right, now the third type, of course, is your experimental apparatus. These are the things that you use to run tests. This would include the equipment such as the things that you use in conducting tests, like your pH meter, your uh, ventilators here, your, your fumes or your fume hoods, these are still part of your experimental apparatus. Now, the last part of the course or the last type of your lab apparatus would be your analytical apparatus. And these are used to gather data or for data gathering and analysis. One important example that you have here, especially in your bio one, would be your microscope. Now, there are several quantities that we measure in the lab. The first one, of course, would be the length. That's the measurement of distance. We'd always be using the metric unit of meter uh, represented by the small letter M. Some tools that we use for the measurement of length, of course, you have your ruler, your meter stick, and your measuring tape. Okay, so that's the length. Secondly, you also have the mass. Again, we've mentioned mass is the measurement of the amount of matter in an object. Metric unit for this would be gram, and of course, the tool that we use would be your balance. Okay, so that's the triple beam balance that you have there. Now, another thing is, of course, the volume, which is the measurement of the amount of space that an object occupies. Metric unit would be liter, represented by capital letter L or big letter L. Then, of course, the tool that we use here, more accurately than your beaker, would be your graduated cylinder. Okay, so graduated cylinder is used to measure volume. Now, remember that whenever you put your liquid inside a tube, a narrow tube, it is going to be forming a meniscus. When you say meniscus, this is the curvature of liquids when placed in a narrow tube. Now, for you to correctly measure the volume of your liquid whenever it forms a meniscus, you should measure the volume at the bottom of your meniscus, okay? Not the, the upper part of your liquid, but at the bottom of your meniscus, okay? So the correct measurement here is going to be 32 milliliters, okay? That's 32. So again, that's meniscus, a curvature that the liquids would form whenever they're placed in a narrow tube. So correct, to correctly measure the, the volume of your liquid, you should look at it at the bottom of your meniscus. Now also remember that whenever you read the volume of liquids, you should measure it at eye level, okay? Put your, your graduated cylinder on a flat surface, then measure the volume at eye level, okay? So that's your meniscus. Now, there are several ways through which we can measure volume. It depends on the type of um, the object that we're measuring volume of. Say you have a liquid, again, that should be at eye level, used to bottom of your meniscus. If it's a regular solid, say it's a box or it's a cube, it's a cube, you can use the formula length times V times height. That's for your regular solid. Now, if your solid is an irregular solid, you can use the displacement method. Okay, displacement method is shown here. Whenever you have your displacement method, you put a certain amount of liquid first in your graduated cylinder, you measure the volume. Then you put in your irregular solid here, then measure the volume of your irregular solid plus the liquid. And then of course, you simply subtract 
the original volume of your liquid from the total volume of your irregular solid plus the volume of your liquid. And that's how you get the volume of your irregular solid. Okay, so again, this is called the displacement method. And this is the method that we use for measuring volumes of irregular solid. Okay, so that's your displacement method. Now, you also measure your density in the lab. Density, the formula for this would just be mass divided by volume. Metric unit, of course, would be gram over milliliter, okay, or gram slash ml. Now, say you have a 45 gram object and the volume is 15 milliliter. What will be the density of this object? Anyone who can tell us what the density of this object is? What will be the density of an object that measures 45 grams, that, that um, has a mass of 45 grams, and a volume of 15 milliliters? Three grams per milliliter? Okay, so that's just going to be three gram per milliliter, okay, or three G slash ML. You simply divide 45 by 15, and that's going to give us 3 gram per milliliter. So that's your density. Now, another thing, of course, that you oftentimes measure in the lab is the temperature, and this is the measurement of hotness or coldness. The metric unit is not Celsius. It's not even Fahrenheit. That would be Kelvin. Okay, so metric unit is Kelvin. The tool that we use, of course, would be your thermometer. So again, I've already mentioned there can be two types of thermometer in your lab, um, the one with the, the red liquid, that's your alcoholic thermometer, and the one with the silver liquid, that's going to be your mercurial thermometer. And we mm, do not really use your mercurial thermometer now. Okay, So that's your alcoholic thermometer that we see in the picture. 